Yo, yo, Spectre here. Today I'm going to show you how to create fuzzy dice in Blender. First things first, open up Blender. Then select your light and then delete it as well as your camera. Then select the cube and then go to edit mode with tab. Then hit control R and create loop cuts and make sure to create four. Then do it again on the other side. And then one more time. Now hit three on your keyboard. And then now start adding the numbers by selecting the faces. And then make sure to hit shift as well on the other numbers. Now make sure to hit I to inset, but make sure to do it very slight. And then hit I again to break them. Then right click, then hit A on your keyboard, then go over to material properties, and let's switch this material over to dice, and then change the base color, make sure to rise the bar up, and then choose whatever color you want, but I'm going to choose teal for this demonstration. And then if you go over here to material preview, you're going to see a change. And then now let's select the faces again one more time. And then make sure to hold shift. And select all the other faces. And then over here, let's make a new material. Then hit new again. And let's call this numbers. And I'm going to leave it as white, but I will rise the bar up here. And then where it says assign, select it. And then now all of your numbers should be white. Then right click and then go over to poke faces. And you're going to see a tab over here on the left. It should say poke faces, poke offset, then click it and then do minus 0.3. And it should look something like this. Then you can go over to your modifiers. So go over to modifier properties and then add modifier. And then go over to subdivision surface and then increase this up to six as well as render. Now if you hit tab, your dice should look something like this. Now let's hide the cube. Make sure to select the eye icon over here. Then do shift A and then on mesh, go over to Taurus and then hit tab and then seven on your keypad. Then make sure to select half of the vertices and then do control seven to go on the opposite side and make sure to hold shift and then select the remaining half and it should look something like this then go over and then make sure to press this move and then just make sure to expand this then hit seven again then hit tab and then make a duplicate control c control v and then now we can select it and then hit 90 degrees. And then you can move it with G and X. And they should be not touching, but almost. Then select both and then hit Control and J to join them together. Then right click, Shade Smooth. Now let's add an array modifier. So go over to modifier properties, then add modifier, then array, and then the count, switch it up to five. And you might see it's a little bit offset. What you can do is on the factor X, decrease it. And if you see that it's still a little bit off, you can also just add a five. And if not, you can just bring it down to three two I'm kind of happy with that so I'm gonna leave it as is then over here on this tab select apply and then now you can show the cube now I'm gonna scale this down to make it fit proper with the cube 
So I kind of like that, so I'm going to leave it as is. Then now I'm just going to align it up to this dice over here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a duplicate of the dice. Control C, Control V. And I'm just going to align the chain. And then I'm going to make a duplicate of this. Control C, Control V. And then just change the tilt of it. And also I'm going to adjust the angle. Now I'm okay with this. And it might be a little lower than the other one, but that's okay. You can just lower one dice over the other. So I'm going to select both and then hit Control J. And then now I'm going to remove the duplicate of the cube. Because now we're going to add the fur. And move this a little down. But before we do all of that, select the chain. And then go over to materials. And then create a new material. And then rename this to chrome. And on the base color, bring the bar up. Now over on metallic, bring it up to 1. And on roughness, you can get it close to 0, but up to you. Then go over to your render settings, and then on render engine, on EV, make sure to switch this over to cycles. And if you have a graphics card, switch the device to GPU. Go over to viewport, and on mag samples, switch over to 300. And then here on the noise threshold, switch it over to 0.1. And then on the samples, do 300. And then make sure to save your file because this next step might crash your computer because of the hair pro uh, particle properties. So do control S and just rename your file, whatever you want. I'm going to just do dice tut for tutorial, then save blender file. And now that we're here, I'm going to go over to upper properties and change some of the settings. I am going to leave it at 1080p on the resolution uh, for re frame rate. I am going to switch it over to 60. And then here on your output properties, um, you can select the folder where you know that you're going to have your actual file saved. So I'm going to rename this to fuzzy dice tet. Hit accept. And here in the file format, I've been getting a lot of questions from my subscribers. You guys are saying that why do I choose PNG over MP4? And that's because I do like to switch the background on my videos after on post-production in Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve. So if you leave it at FFmpeg video, it's going to have the, the black background. And I do like to add, you know, other kinds of videos to make it look more dynamic. Or if I want to make it look transparent, um, I can just add a white background and it looks uh, kind of transparent uh, because PNG sequences um, do provide that compared to a regular mp4 but if you're okay with that just leave it at mp4 but i'm going to switch it back to png and then here on rgba make sure to have that selected and then on color depth do 16. also if you want to learn more about what i just explained you can check the link above i'll leave it on the eye icon now let's go over to the shading tab and then on object go over to world view then do shift a and then search and then do environment texture and then connect color to color then hit open and then go over to your local disk or wherever you have blender downloaded then go to program files then go to blender foundation and then select your latest version of blender or the one you're currently using then go to 3.5 or whatever uh, number that is then go over to data files and then go to studio lights and then hit world and you can choose any one of these that you have and I'm going to go with the studio. It's kind of the, my go to then go to open. Now if you go over to rendered view, you can see it has like that studio feel kind of background. Then go back to layout 
and then now uh, make sure to be selected on the cube and then go over to your particle system then hit add then go over to hair and then now you're gonna see that you have hair on your cube then here on the number switch over to 5000 then here on hair length you can do a 0.3 then go down to where it says children and then go over to interpolated and you can bring this up to 25 and make sure on render it's the same way now I should start looking fuzzy then scroll down and then find roughness and then click on the drop down and here on random you can do a 0.1 and then here on the size you can do a 2 now scroll up, then click on this icon here, and then go over to object mode, and then go over to wet paint. Now if you zoom in, make sure to make the radius a little higher. Then start filling in the holes. And it's okay if you go a little bit up outside of the circle. And then just start doing this every single hole that you have on each face. Now, make sure to reactivate this setting here. Then go down to where it says vertex groups and then where it says density. Click on it and then hit group. And you can see every section that was filled in. Then go up here to where it says weights and then invert. And then now you can exit to object mode. And now you can see that the numbers are visible, but we do have a problem. You can see that the hair particles are a little bit too big. So all you can do is just go over to the particle system and just go up. And then here on hair length, you can actually decrease this. So you can do a 0.1 and it looks a little bit better but it still looks fuzzy so and if you go over to rendered view it still looks good enough uh, and that's why it's also important to when you're doing on the wet paint and you're filling it in it's uh, important to kind of go a little bit above of the rim of the circle now make a duplicate control C control V and then just slide it out and we're gonna start aligning the chain over it with the cube. So with the move tool, just start aligning it. Let me just delete that. There you go. And it's okay if the chain is going through because that's the whole purpose of the chain. And then now if you want to rotate it, you can choose the numbers that you want to show. Okay, now I got the cubes um, where I want them to be, showing the face. And just make sure to tilt to your liking. And I wanted to show the six and then the three. Now go over to your render properties and then go to film. And then over here on transparent, make sure to select that. And then now we're almost done. Now we're gonna do the animation. And then now that we got everything together, select everything and then hit control and then the letter J. And it might take a little bit um, because of the particles of the hair. It does take some time. And I'm going to do control S and then save it just in case. Okay, now it's all into a one object. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to input a camera so do shift a and then go to camera and then just bring back the the camera depending on where you actually input it the numbers that you want to show now I'm going to go into active camera And now the animation, I'm going to just do a simple 360. 
So I'm going to actually increase the name or the numbers of the timeline to 500. So I'm going to start on one frame here on the left. And then on the Z rotation, insert a keyframe. Now it is a little bit taxing on the computer, so that's why it's kind of a, giving me that no response. I'll just give it a second. And then over on 500. Okay, now over here on the Z rotation, what you can do is do a plus 360, then hit enter. And now what this is going to do is going to is going to do a complete 360 from the actual position that it is from the very start at the keyframe. Now just give it some time. And then now enter the keyframe. Then over here, right click and then go into interpolation. But let me move my camera so we, you can see what I'm doing. And then hit Bezier. Then right click and then set origin to center of mass volume, then you can tell that it's now centered in position. So that way when it does a 360, it doesn't uh, move kind of weird. And you can tell by just going over to a different set of frames and it should stay in the same position. So now in this frame, you can see that the chain is still there in the middle. Now it is ready. Um, I already inputted the animations. And now what I'm gonna do is just hit control and F12. and it's gonna start rendering. Um, just be aware that it, because of the hair particles, it does take a lot of time. And there you have it guys, that is how to create fuzzy dice in Blender. And if this has helped you out in any way, shape or form, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. Also, please make sure to follow my Discord. If you guys have any questions regarding any of my tutorials or you wanna give out suggestions for future videos, make sure to uh, follow me. I'll leave the link in the description. Also, follow my social medias, it is at Spectre3D. And as always, thanks for watching.